I, an apostle of Jesus Christ, through the will of God, to you who are in America, grace and peace be unto you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I had longed to be able to come to see you. I have heard of you and what you are doing. I have heard of the fascinating and astounding advances that you have made in the scientific and the material realms. I have heard of your aeroplanes, and I have heard about the fact that through your scientific genius, you have been able to dwarf distance and place time in change. Yes, you have been able to carve highways through the stratosphere. And so in your world, you have made it possible to eat breakfast in London, England, and lunch in New York City. But America, I am wondering, as I look at you from afar, whether or not you have gone as far in the spiritual and moral realm seems to me, America, that although you have advanced scientifically and materially, you lag behind spiritually and morally. As that same Lord said, that same Lord that met me on the Damascus road, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world of means, aeroplanes, subways, and all the skyscraping buildings and lose the end, the soul. So America, I would urge you to seek to bring your spiritual advances up to your material advances. I am impelled also to write you concerning the tremendous responsibilities confronting Christians attempting to live in a sub-Christian age. Yes, I had to do that, for I had to live in an unchristian world. And every Christian has a basic responsibility to live a Christian in an unchristian world. They tell me that there are some among you, even in the churches, who give their ultimate allegiance to the patterns of the world. They want to be accepted socially. They are afraid to be ostracized. And so they conform to the patterns of the world. They live by some such philosophy as this. Everybody is doing it, so it must be all right. And so, so often in your age, Right has become merely something of taking a gallop poll of the majority opinion. How many are living like that? How many people are giving their ultimate allegiance to this way? But America, may I say to you, as I said to the Roman church, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And may I also say to you that you have a dual citizenry. You have a twofold citizenry. You are not only a citizen of this world, but you are a citizen of another world. You live both in time and eternity, both in heaven and earth. And you must come to see that although it is true that you live now in the colony of time, you must always take your orders from the empire of eternity. You must come to see that, America that your ultimate allegiance is not to the government, not to the state, not to the nation, but your ultimate allegiance is to God and sometimes it's necessary to be, to speak out against the state in order to stand up with God. Old oh, America, will you come to see this? How I long to be with you. But let me rush on and say something about the church. I must say to you once more, as I have said so often before, 
that the church is the body of Christ. And in the body of Christ there can be no division. In the body of Christ there can be no disunity. And then I must say one other thing. You know, I said to the church at Corinth that love is the principal thing, and I want to still say that to America. In America, I want you to know that you might move high in the world. You might come to the point that you are mighty eloquent in your speech. You might master the English language. All of your grammar might be perfect. You might move high. You might move with all of the eloquence of an articulate speech. But I want you to realize, America, that it is still true that even if you can speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, you are become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Yes, America, you may have the gift of prophecy so that you can understand all mysteries. You may have scientific insights so that you can break out into the storehouse of nature. Yes, America, you might have all of the mysteries and understand them so that you can remove the mountains of material obstacles. You may move all of the mountains that stand before you, but unless you have love, it means nothing. But even more, America, you may give your goods to feed the poor. But if you have not love, it means nothing, yes, and you may even give your body to be burned. You may even stand up and die life as a martyr. You may stand before the universe as that honorable person who was willing to stand up as a martyr. But even if you do that and you have not love, it means nothing. This is the end of life. This is the end of the universe. The end of the universe is not to be happy. The end is not to avoid suffering, but the end of life is to do the will of God, come what may. Oh, America, will you hear that and will you follow that before it is too late? But I want to say something to you about the meaning of the gospel in trying to live up to the high and noble principles of this religion, you often fall short. And I know how you felt sometimes. You tried to, to live up to it and you didn't quite make it. Sometimes you felt that you could do it alone, but the more you tried, the more you discovered that you couldn't do it alone. And I know how you were caught up in the tragic dimensions of sin, both individual and collective. As you try to follow the law of love, you find yourself saying, Oh, wretched man that I am. You discover somehow that the more you try, the more you discover that you can't do it alone. And oh, you end up in despair. You end up in a tragic state. You feel that you have lost out. Yes, I have been like that. But when I came to that point, when I came to the point of feeling that I couldn't make it alone, when I came to the point of realizing that I was too weak to make it, I discovered something else. I reached out and saw breaking out of eternity into time the powerful dimensions of God's grace. And where sin abounded, grace abounded even more exceedingly. And so I want to say to you, America, reach out. And if you reach far enough, you will discover God's grace. And it is that grace that can lift you from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. It is that grace that can lift you from the midnight of sorrow to the daybreak of joy. It is that grace that helps you to see that by the grace of the Almighty God, you can live in this world and you can live this life. And you can see the face of the Almighty God with all of his eternal principles. In the midst of man's tragic sin stands God's amazing grace. I must say goodbye to you now. Maybe I will not see you, but I will meet you in God's eternity. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and even forever.
This is the letter, and now comes the living of it. Let us pray. O oh God, our gracious Heavenly Father, help us to reach out in our lives and see the great principles of life. Help us to see the work and worth of the Apostle Paul, who stands at the center of our faith as one of the most noble Christians, and who stands as a challenge to us in all ages and in all generations. Help us to realize at all times the relevance of the gospel in every nation and in every community. In the name and spirit of Jesus we pray. Amen.